Here in this video, we're going to be doing 2.8, which is function, operations, and composition. So here we will be adding two functions together, subtracting two functions together, multiplying two functions together, or even dividing two functions, okay? Um, so the first thing that they want us to do is evaluate operations of functions. So they've given us two functions and they've asked us to find f plus g is zero. Well, the first thing I wanna do is change this notation into this notation. So this is the same thing as saying f of zero plus g of zero. So essentially what I need to do is I need to plug in zero into the f function and I need to plug in zero into the g function and then add those two results together. So for the f function, I'm gonna plug in zero. And for the g function, I'm going to plug in zero. And then let's evaluate that. We get zero minus four, which is negative four. And here we get zero times two, which is zero, minus one is negative one. And then negative four plus negative one is negative five. So we found that out. Now here they're asking me to do f of g might or f minus g of four. So let's rewrite it, that's f of four minus g of four. So let me plug in four into f, subtract whatever I get when I plug in four for g. So then here I get 12 minus four, which is eight. And here I get 16, 32, so 31. And I'm not sure about that, eight minus 31. There's something on my calculator. There we go, is negative 23. Now we're gonna multiply, so this is f of negative two um, times g of negative two which means I'm going to plug in negative two into F. And then I'm going to plug in um, negative two into G and multiply the results. So negative six minus four is negative 10. Um, negative four, that's four, I mean negative, that's positive four, eight minus one is seven. Multiply that together, I get negative 70. And then finally over here, we're going to get to divide. So f of three over g of three. Here I don't need the brackets because I have a separator, which is the division bar. So I'm gonna plug in three into f, and then I'm gonna plug three into g. And make sure you put the f function on top like it says there and the g function at the bottom. So that's nine minus four, which is five. That's nine, 18, 17. I would reduce this if I could, but this cannot be reduced, so that's the answer. Not too bad, right? Let's keep going. So now they don't want us to evaluate a number. They want us to actually find the expression. So basically a formula to find all the x values once I know what they are. So for this case, um, what that means is we're gonna take f of x plus g of x. So I'm gonna do the same thing as I did before. I'm gonna put f of x in, print, in a bracket and then g of x in a bracket. Or I could have used parentheses, doesn't matter, okay? Um, but notice that I kept the x because there was no number given to me here. So this expression is f of x, this expression is g of x. There's no exponent or coefficient, so I don't really need that bracket. Here there's no exponent, and there is a coefficient of positive one, but positive one is gonna keep that as a positive four x and a positive five. And But I do have like terms that I can combine. So I get positive one x plus five. So this is the expression you get for f plus g. So basically putting the two together. Now for f minus g, I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna put f in the front, 
minus g in the back. No exponent, no coefficient, so I just have what's on the inside. No exponent, but I do have a coefficient of negative 1, which is going to change that to negative 4x, and it's going to change that to negative 5. I do have common terms, so I can combine those like terms, and this is the expression I get for f minus g. Now here we're doing f times g, so we're going to do x squared minus 3x times 4x plus 5. And how do you multiply multiple terms? You have to distribute the x squared, then distribute the negative 3x. So that becomes 4x cubed plus 5x squared minus 12x squared minus 15x. I do have like terms. And so this is the expression I get for f times g. Then we have f of x over g of x. So we basically have x squared minus 3x over 4x plus 5. Now I could try to reduce this, um, but if I factor the top the bottom does not factor, and none of the factors are the same. So you really can't reduce this, so just leave it the way it was. But normally you would try to reduce it. Now part E says give the domains of each of the parts, okay? So this is important. Um, the domain of F plus G is the same as the domain of F minus G, and that's also the same as the domain of f times g. And what is that domain? It's the domain of f intersected with the domain of g. Okay? So what do the two domains have in common is basically what the intersection is. Well, the domain of f, f is just the square. Domain of the squared function is negative infinity to infinity. And then the g of x is a line. And the domain of a line is negative infinity to infinity. So what do they have in common? They actually have the whole number line in common. So they have negative infinity to infinity in common. So that's the domain for all three of these. So each one of these, this is the domain. The domain of f of g is the only one that's different. It's equal to the domain of f intersect with the domain of g, but you have to remove any values that make g equal to zero, okay? Because g is at the bottom. So let's go figure out what is going to make g equal to zero. 4x plus five equal to zero. Um, if I minus five on both sides, and then if I divide by four, I get this. So remember the domain of intersect. This part, we already know what it is. It's negative infinity to infinity. But now I'm telling you to remove negative five fourths. And that's not a minus sign. That means remove, okay? So here's my number line. We're saying negative infinity to infinity should be the domain. But now we're telling you to take out, you have a big old hole at negative five fourths. So what does the domain become then? The domain of FG becomes negative infinity to negative five fourths, and then negative five fourths to positive infinity. So remember, the domain for all three of these is negative infinity to infinity. The domain of the fraction is the one that's different, okay? You find the value that um, makes g equal to zero, or makes the denominator equal to zero, and then you just, basically it splits the negative infinity to infinity at that number. I'm gonna stop the video here and we'll keep going in the next one.